So you can start now. Okay, so first off, a quick overview of the project. We're developing a smart contract test suite that can be used as, the ben as a benchmark to test smart contract analyzers. We're using Solidity to develop these smart contracts. And we think that this would be of great help because uh, currently there, is no, there are no standards in testing these tools. While we're developing the test suite, we're also running some analysis tools on the tests that we've developed to see how they perform and compute uh, a number of performance metrics. Also, this is part of a greater effort. It's part of my PhD thesis, which has the purpose of uh, identifying and mitigating vulnerabilities on Ethereum smart contracts. And this developed under the supervision of Dore Lucano and Andrea Rosoe. So, what are, our, what are our goals? We want to improve our knowledge of solidity and of smart contracts vulnerability in general. This would allow us to develop more complex scenarios. We want to create a benchmark that can be used to test these analysis tools. As I was saying earlier, currently, each developer is, is using its own test suite to test the analysis tools that he developed. And uh, some test suites tend to target one single vulnerability, like reentrancy, while ignoring other issues that uh, maybe aren't as important, but uh, they're still pretty important. And our last goal is to gather useful information about uh, why these tools aren't able to detect certain issues or why they detect them when they aren't really there. That's why we really love uh, open source tools. Currently, we're really looking into Slitter and seeing how it works uh, behind the scenes. Okay, so how we approach this? First off, we had to find a taxonomy, which wasn't really easy because uh, in the smart contest community, you have community taxonomies like SWC registry or DSAP top 10, and also taxonomies that are created in the academic medium. But we managed to found a taxonomy that uh, acts as a bridge between these two worlds, a taxonomy that's contained in a, ba in a paper that was developed at the University of uh, Informatics from Vienna. After that, we looked at each category from the taxonomy and researched those issues. I have to admit that the uh, SWC registry was of huge help at this task, but uh, there were some that we couldn't find there. After that, we adapted the knowledge that we gained from step so from step two into, into writing a test for that uh, vulnerability, a test or multiple tests. After we write the test, we try to come up with a solution for that uh, for that problem and write a fixed version of the test. And when the test suite is finished, we run multiple analysis tools on the test suite and see how each performs. Okay, so what is a test? A test is more or less a smart contract in most cases. There are some issues like vulnerable delegate call that require multiple contracts, but in most cases, the mapping is one test per contract. We have positive variations and negative variations. Positive variations are uh, contracts that contain an issue, and the issue should be detected by analysis tools. And negative variations are tests that do not contain a certain issue, and the issue should not be reported by analysis tools. Having both positive and negative variations really helps us in seeing which tools have a robust detection. Currently, our test suite contains 204 contracts that are split among 47 different categories. Actually, the test suite is bigger than that, but uh, we had some categories that uh, either did not compile on the latest version of Solidity, like, let's say, uh, arbitrary write to storage, or some uh, operator's typo, 
or some issues that uh, were fixed in the registers of, solid of solidity, like internal underflow and uh, overflow. Currently, currently an exception is thrown and, tra and the transaction is reverted. These tests are in, aren't, included in, aren't included in the statistics, but uh, we have them just in case. And now I'm going to show a more detailed view of our test suite. So these are the categories. We have 10 categories in total. And the number of tests are split, are split pretty evenly, except except some, let's say, more special categories like malicious environment transaction input, which contains the really popular re-entrancy and other things related to exception, to exception, exception handling or bad coding patterns. Okay. So what were the challenges in developing this test suite? First off, deciding which taxonomy to use wasn't easy because uh, we wanted to take into, into consideration the opinion of the Ethereum community, but also the opinion of researchers. After that, we had to think of uh, credible ways to exemplify those vulnerabilities because uh, we're not writing a depth for each vulnerability, but we're trying to give them a little bit of context. And the reverse case is also true. We had to isolate vulnerabilities from way larger contacts into small contacts that are easier to read. After that, we had to decide which scenarios can really be classified as vulnerabilities, because in this area, there's a lot of contradiction. For example, some people say, Use, use send and transfer because they're good, they prevent re-entrancy, they're safe. While other people say, don't use send and transfer because they have a constant guess amount. And if the network gets updated, your content might not work anymore. So yeah, we really had to make decisions like that. And we also had to decide uh, which vulnerabilities can be reasonably detected by a tool because there are some issues like logic errors that can only be seen by the human eye and we shouldn't expect at all to be able to detect that. And there are also some cases where we're not expecting the tool to signal the issue with a 100% confidence, but more uh, issue and warning, like you may want to double check this. For example, when using arrays, if the Ray index might go out of bounds. We're not expecting the tool to know for certain when it will go out of bounds, but uh, we wish that it would say something like, okay, so you're using an array here, you might want to double check it. Okay. <clears throat> we already tested some tools, and, uh, and here, they are, here they are. We included Sweeter, Solhind, Mitril, and the static analysis plugin from Remix, along with the Solidity compiler. For a tool to qualify for our study, it had to fulfill two main criteria. To work on the latest version of Solidity, which wasn't easy. And, uh, and if it's open source, even better, or at least free to use. Also, we're aware of the fact that Remix has multiple integrations, even with tools such as Sweeter and Solhint, but we only consider the, their proprietary static analysis plugin for this study. Also, we chose to include the compiler because we're su surprised by the fact that it actually has some good detections. It really does. And now for the results. We included five metrics in this slide. First off, the detection rate, how many 
<clears throat> how many positive variations were identified from the total number of positive variations, the false positive rate, how many false positives we are to return, the productivity, which is a metric calculated using the previous two, the robust detection rate, which basically means a correct detection. If the issue is there, it should be signaled. If the issue is not there, it should not be signaled. And a method that I find quite, quite interesting, the UNIPS, which means that a certain issue was detected by one tool and one tool only. And even if we added more tests since we compiled these results and we want to add more tools to our study, we, are, we can already observe some pretty interesting things, I'd say. Overall, Sweeter seems to be the best tool. It has a pretty high detection rate in productivity, but it also has the highest false positive rate out of all the tools. The, uh, the static analysis plugin from Remix also did pretty good. But we have to acknowledge something. The compiler for Solidity had a 0% false positive rate. So basically, it did not signal many issues, but when it did, those issues were really there. Okay. So, we already have a pretty big test suite. We wish to make it even bigger in the future. We developed it based off a verified taxonomy. We already compiled some preliminary results using state-of-the-art tools. And in the future, we want to increase the size of our study to add more tests, to include more tools, and to consider more metrics for those tools. And that's about it for me, if there are any questions.